G'day folks, in this video I'll show you how you can change the centers on this crazy Pyramix crystal. Right, well what I'm going to do is take you through the entire process, I'm not going to speed up anything, so that's just for those who want to see exactly how to do it. This is not a simple thing, so it is not, as I said in my unboxing, of this video it's not a user-friendly sort of process it's not a quick process but it is possible to do and so it's one of those things where i think you'd end up spending quite a bit of time on one variation of a puzzle anyway if you change this to the neptune you wouldn't just solve it in a day and then want to change it again so i don't think there was any other way to do this let me show you exactly how i've discovered to do it there's nothing out there so i think this is the first video so even if it's uh, not as simple as it could be, well, it's something. And I'd love to see a simpler way. So the first thing, let's say that we want to change the white face. At the moment, this white face is a zero face. You can see that as I turn it, the center parts stay fixed there. So that is a zero face. Let's change this to a one face. First thing I want to do is on the whatever face there are, you can see there are five edges. And I want to turn each edge up one at a time and just release the pieces. And what I'm going to need for this, by the way, is a small Phillips head screwdriver just to get the screw out. And then a small flathead screwdriver or one of those plastic spudgery type tools that you can just sort of get in a bit. I'm happy to use this. You may not be. Okay, so we've got the first little part out. I then want to just move the white piece up and whatever tool you're using, just get it in there underneath. And it's just enough so that you can displace it from its position. Normally when I'm doing it, it just goes straight away. It's just because I'm trying to demonstrate it. It's not, I'm not holding it you know, as I would normally position it. So this is, I'm making it look a lot worse than it actually is. That'll just come out like that. That's what I want. When those two bits are done, turn that back down and then move around to the next one. And we can just take that white purple edge out, move this one up. Let's get it out like that. That's more normal. Okay, turn it back. You might be thinking, why am I doing all of them? Can't I just unscrew the screw? Well, no, you can't. And that's one of the reasons this is quite tricky to do. You'll see when we get to the guts of it what I mean. Now, sometimes when you turn it back, there's another piece here. You might just have to hold your finger in it just to make sure it stays. If it falls out, it's definitely not the end of the world at all. That one's out. Nearly there for these five pieces. There we go. Yep, that's fine. That's just starting to come out. So at this point, you've got all of those circle edges and the outer edges on that face out. Now, what we need to be able to do is get this cap off because it's covering the screw. And you can see clearly, I, there's no way I can get that off at the moment because of these pieces here. So that's sort of what I want to do next. The way to do that is I want to just choose a front edge here. And there's inside here, the circle edges sit on a little circle edge base, which is right where I'm pointing there. So here's an outer corner, here's a circle corner, and the circle corners look, you know, on a, when you're looking at it, they look like they're the same sort of piece. There's a circle corner, there's a circle edge. They look basically identical, but they're quite different in terms of what they actually are. So that circle edge there sits on a base, and that base is what I've got to get out now. And in terms of disassembling, this is probably, or not disassembling, I'm not going to do the whole lot, but... In terms of changing the center, this is probably the hardest little bit to get. Once this is done, it's not too bad at all. What you've got to do is get your little spudger and just jump in between those two bits there. And you can see that I've done that. Flick it out. Sometimes it takes a couple of times just to get it under enough. And it feels like it wants to come, but then it doesn't. And when you're putting it back in, you might have the same sort of issue. You're not really going to break anything. There we go. 
eventually that will come loose and we can have a look at it. Okay, there's that circle base, circle edge base that I'm talking about. So these little circle edges sit there like that. So we've got that base out. I'll just put that aside. And the reason for getting the base out is so that I can start removing the circle corners. So I don't need to remove the outer corners at all. The circle corner, the first one that I do here, again, it's probably the trickiest of the circle corners, but it's just a matter of getting something under it. Well, this one looks like it wants to come out first, so do that one. There you go, that's a circle corner. And you can see the difference in terms of the circle corner and the circle edge. They're quite similar, but in terms of what's going on, this is one piece, but this is connected to its base. So I've got that circle corner out. Now that I've got that, to make it easier, what I'm able to do is get into the cap. And a lot of the time the cap will just flip off with your fingernail there. But even so, it's still tricky to get it off. So you might just need to use your little tool and just sort of get under it and move it like that until it comes over to this position and you can take it out. So that's all that is, just a little cap sitting there covering the screw. That, of course, is what we've been trying to get at. So now that we've got access to the screw, get our little Phillips head, jump in and start unscrewing it. And in fact, when we're, uh, when we're going this way, when we're looking to change the center, and I'll say disassemble, we can unscrew the whole thing because we don't have to kind of go in any order now. We just want to basically get it so that all of these pieces now will just start coming out. There's no need to do that in any particular order. As long as they all come out it's good so i'm being a little bit more delicate than i normally would here but you can see one of them just fallen on the floor i'll have to grab that in a minute at this point you can kind of tip it like that the other stuff doesn't move so that is the inside of our puzzle you can see right down there is the core that's what the screw through this piece is screwing into and not exactly sure where I'd leave it maybe right in there I don't know probably anyway that's how we get it all out let me grab that piece from the floor all right now that we've done that let's take a look at this center part so there's the screw and the spring there's no washer that I could see in it anywhere what we have here is this center part with a little shaft and it clicks into place so I'll just pull that off so I'll just put that aside. When we're looking at this shaft, you'll notice that the cylindrical part was up the top when I had it. It was like that cylindrical part at the top and the, the uh, straight line part or the pentagonal part at the bottom. That's what you want to do if you want a zero face. Now, what I tried is just turning it over because it does seem like if you turn it over, you can just put it back in and go, oh, that must be a one face. However, I found that it didn't really hold firm as a one face. I was kind of also expecting maybe it'll block the face, but it didn't really do that either. So for me to get a one face, I just want to discard this piece, put it in a bag somewhere, and that is what I want to use. That'll be a one face and I'll absolutely show you that. Before I put it all back together, there's one thing that I want to just comment on. At the moment, you can see that we've got inside the core, there's a pentagon there and there's an edge of the pentagon at the bottom so this edge here right there and I need to put my piece so that it matches so if I just drop that in there like that at the moment it's possible to have it anywhere but let's say I have a look at it with the zero face on I'll slide that in and we'll just see now I can tell you now this is not going to work because I need to have the base of the pentagon match the base here. But the way that I've put this on, it's not going to work. I have to have it round the other way. So I take that off, turn it round, put it on this way. I'll put it in, show you that it will actually work. Now it just drops in. What is going on? Well, you'll notice with this that there are two sets of little holes here one on this side one on the other 
directly opposite each other. Now, if I put it like this, what I'm looking at is that when it clicks in, I want this edge of this base to match this edge here. And you'll notice that it does. If I was to do it the other way, turn it around 180 degrees, which seems like it should work, and click it in, I've got an edge here, but I've actually got a corner here. I don't have a flat part. If I turn it around the other side, I do have a flat part, but I have a corner sticking out here. So that's just something to watch for. If you're going to put it back in and try and make a zero face, you actually have to get this little connector correctly positioned. And you'll know that it's correctly positioned because it'll just drop in there perfectly. Okay. We don't want to make a zero face though. We want to make a one face. So let's take that off. Let's now go about getting that functional. So I drop it in there. The thing is now it'll turn around as you like. So what I want to do here, particularly for a one face, I'll put the screw back in and I want to screw it in just enough so that it holds it firmish. So I'm just going to hold that there. Probably that's enough. I mean, I know it'll move around because it's supposed to because it's a one face, but just as long as it's not going to pull out. Now, if it was a zero face, that would not be doing that at all. So it's only with the one faces that you've just got to make sure that this retains its orientation there. Okay, what I want to do now is replace four of the circle edge bases and four of the circle corners. Now, the way that I've found to do this, the easiest way is firstly, Let's grab a circle corner, which you remember is this one piece part. I can just, this is my front section. I can just put it in here and then it will just move around to the back. Now you can see that has rotated a bit, so I'll put it back. Once I've got that first one in, I'm going to snap in two circle edge bases either side. And that's very simple now because it's just, not almost no tension on the center part so you can just kind of put them there and they just snap in like that next i want to put a couple more circle corners either side so you can try and just snap them in the same way but i've found it's far easier just to put them in here at the front and turn them around into position and just check that that's still where it should be it should be okay now same thing for here. I guess you could put it in here as well if you wanted. Because I haven't put a circle edge base there yet. Okay, so we're building it up. A couple more circle edge bases. There's one that needs to go there. Again, it just snaps in easily. And one on the other side. We've got that pointing the right way. I haven't even got the right piece. It's always good if you try and use the right piece for these things. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at the orientation. Yes, that's looking really good. What's next? I've done one, two, three of them and one, two, three, four of them. So I need another circle corner either side. It doesn't matter which side. Again, I'll just put it in there and turn it to its position like so. Okay, because now what I want to do, and this is where it becomes not difficult, but just, okay, now we're getting to the near the end of it. I got to screw the screw in properly. And this is the only part of it which is slightly frustrating, is that you're going to screw the screw in now, you're going to tighten the screw, and you're going to tighten it as you want it. The problem is you can't really turn it to test. I mean, you probably can a bit, and when you're experimenting with yours you'll see that but this has got to be now as tight or not as you want it so i'm going to go relatively tight I'll probably keep going until it's pretty much there it's all the way now for a one face i could actually back it off i reckon maybe three or four for a zero face i'd only back it off one one and a half because i want that to remain fairly firm one faces don't seem to matter that much. So I've got the screw tightened. Next thing, I want the cap. This is why I've left this little gap here. So I can grab that cap, move it over. And again, 
maybe just use this sort of thing position it and that looks good that cap is on you can just sort of press it down if you're a bit worried after that you want to replace the last circle corner which is this piece here it's the same sort of way it's just slightly trickier because everything's tensioned now so i'm just going to sort of put it in there maybe pull this back slightly snap it in there we go that's good and then the final if i can find it the final circle edge base which is sitting here now this it was the hardest piece to get out and it's probably the hardest piece to put in so the the trick is just to make sure that this little tongue stays pointing that way sometimes it's very easy for it to just swivel around and you're trying to put it in like that well obviously that won't work so i might just kind of try and move them out the way a little bit and snap boom so it wasn't as bad as i was making it out to be now the last thing to do is replace the remaining pieces that we've got and we do that in exactly the same way so now it doesn't matter i can do this anytime i like i just want to turn that up to that sort of position and firstly just snap in a white piece like that i'm looking for the white red which is this one that will then snap in nice and easily bring it back next one white green so I'll turn that up just got my finger over here just trying to keep that piece down and you can see this piece has sort of come out as well in its excitement there so that's the only thing you got to watch a little bit no big deal just be aware of it snap that one in looking for a white green that's done okay next one white purple let's see what's what that's looking okay I think that's probably okay let's try the white now two to go that's looking good And the final one. Okay. Big question, of course, is have I actually achieved anything? Of course I have. I now have a working functional one face here. You can see that white face is now clearly a one face. Those center parts are turning with the face. So now... When it's a zero face, if I try and turn another face up and turn that zero face, those parts remain fixed on that face. But of course now, if I do the same thing here, I try and turn that up. Those red parts can now turn off with the face and they can go traveling all over the puzzle. So even just making that one change with that one face now, it's going to turn this into a completely different puzzle for you to solve. So that is how I've come up with to change these centers. As I said at the start, not exactly user friendly, but I hope you'll see that I don't really think there was any other way for them to do that. As always, thanks for watching.